I greet all those who are watching us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are doing here through our channels, our multi-platform system, a series about the work abroad. You can also watch previous editions through the Maranatha Christian Church channel on YouTube. And if you are already on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and share. This content you are watching here now. Now, you will learn more about the work in North America. This is today's episode. And in this dynamic model we are creating here of conversation, I bring to participate in this content and to talk about North America. About the work in North America, I bring the pastor who is the president of the Maranatha Christian Church in the United States. Who is Pastor Ronildo Sher? Ronildo, the peace of the Lord, welcome. The peace of the Lord. Pastor Josias, I also greet our brothers who are watching us and to say that it is a great joy to be here participating in this program and to talk a little about how our experience has been here in North America, which includes the United States and Canada. Amen, comrade. Good to have you with us here. Well, let's start by asking you a few questions, Ronildo, to talk about the work there in your region in North America. The first thing I want to ask is if you can give us a brief explanation about the work there in North America, the countries where the work is, the geographical size of this region, how the work started in these countries. Can you talk a little about this? Give us a brief history. Make a brief introduction about this reality. We're talking about three geographically large countries and everything very distant. And this makes evangelization very difficult. Even so, we have churches in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And over these last three decades, we have had wonderful growth. With regard to the instrumentality of our workers, I remember new converts from the beginning of the work where some workers, deacons, roared. And today, to the glory of the Lord's name, a considerable number of them are pastors of churches in this work. In fact, we have American and Canadian pastors dedicating themselves diligently to the care of the flock and in matters concerning the kingdom of God. That is to say, my friend, that we are talking about three countries, characterized by a great spiritual hardness and coldness with regard to Christianity. But with the action of the Holy Spirit, our people have experienced the joy of eternity during this prophetic moment that the work is experiencing even before we are raptured. Amen. How good, how good to know that. Let's move on. Ronildo, what are the regions where we have the Maranatha Christian Church? Talking about our churches, talking about our acquisitions. Could you talk a little about that? And also, which places have hosted our seminars so far? Moreover, when we talk about the churches in North America, there are some temples that have been acquired, centennial temples. Talk a little about Look that. Look closely, Pastor Josias. In the beginning, we had some difficulties. We rented halls to be adapted as places of worship. But today, for the honor and glory of the Lord's name, he has blessed us with dozens of properties acquired by the Christian Maranatha Church. It is important to mention that in less than a year, we buy two evangelical temples, which are historic. Places that could be turned into bars, restaurants. And we see that while the world in our days witnesses a decline of modern Christianity. As has been mentioned in our manins, in the form of classes and in our Sunday schools, we have no joy in saying this. 
quite the opposite. But our experience has been that. The Lord allows doors to remain open for the preaching of the genuine gospel. Servants of God who attended these temples and who thought they had lost a place of worship to God. But the Lord, by his mercy, has given these brothers a place where they can continue attending our temples and have a living experience with the operations of the Holy Spirit. In the last month, we had the joy of consecrating a temple in Radford, in the capital of Can Eric, a beautiful temple which with its 98 years, and which at its 100 years will become historic. We also bought our church in Gardner, Massachusetts, with its 200 and a few years of existence, and with the facilities preserved impeccably. These were gifts that the Lord our God prepared for the work of the Holy Spirit here in the United States. It would be good to mention that most of our members are concentrated in the United States, mainly on the East Coast, in the Northeast, and in Florida. When we talk about general seminars, they are held annually in Massachusetts and Florida to serve areas with a higher concentration of brethren, such as the one held in early October in Toronto, eastern region of Canada, with approximately 300 participants. Besides these seminars, the pastors of North America work together so that the doctrine is also strengthened in other areas. We have many seminars and regional seminars, which are held in the central and western regions, both in the United States and Canada. Glory to Jesus. I had the opportunity to be there, to get to know some of those places, and to be with the brethren. They're in North America. It was a blessing, okay? Very well. I have one more question, Renildo, to ask you. If you could comment on how the services are conducted. From your point of view of the language, are they done with simultaneous translation? Of course. Our services are conducted with the exact same liturgy as the services in Brazil, creating, even in the lives of the brothers who visit us, the expression, I feel at home, just like in the churches of the work in Brazil. We are completely capable of serving the Brazilian brothers, and now with our children, born here, and who were raised in the work, becoming also instruments in the hands of God. Today we have the structure to serve our English-speaking brothers and the Portuguese-speaking ones. For our brothers who are qualified to perform translations in both languages. In addition, Pastor Josias, many of our pastors have been living in the United States and Canada for a long time. And for the honor and glory of the Lord's name, visitors leave our churches with assistance. And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit through spiritual gifts, regardless of their nationality. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In our churches, services are held in Portuguese, with translation into English or vice versa. And sometimes, depending on the location of the church, they also have translation into Spiritism, Spanish and Russian. Pastor Josias, a piece of news that I would like to share with you and our brothers. We are developing here in the United States a translation system through artificial intelligence, which will greatly facilitate and expand the reach of this work. Hundreds of churches in other countries will benefit from this tool in dozens of languages. 
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. What a blessing. Very well. Renildo, a question. How has the experience been of receiving visitors from various nations? There in America, there are people from various nations who pass through live. How has this experience been for you? This is something impressive as we have witnessed salvation. We have received a good number of people from diverse nationalities, especially in Canada, which has received people from the African continent, from Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and also from Latin America. See what a wonder God is doing in North America. We have some churches where our services are also accessible to deaf people. We have encouraged the brethren to master American Sign Language. And several have volunteered so that the message of the gospel also reaches these brethren. In fact, in the latest seminars, we included interpretation for American Sign Language in our broadcasts. Making the word accessible to everyone, my friend, Glory to God. And how have visitors been coming to the churches? In what way have these visitors and the natural visitors from your region, native residents in America, been coming to our churches? Pastor Josias, this question is very important. The Holy Spirit has brought many new visitors through the evangelization of the brothers. Both Brazilians and Americans and Hispanics in a wonderful way, something we've never seen before. They come, participate in the services, return, and then comment that at first, they came either out of curiosity or even to please the one who invited them. But the movement of the Spirit has been so abundant in the services that they end up becoming attached to the project. to the point of wanting to participate in our Sunday school classes and our dynamics, the answers to the questions asked on Sunday. Something that surpasses any action of human strategy and logic. Praise be the name of to the To give Lord. you an idea, Josias, in Canada we receive the presence of authorities and members of the Brazilian and Canadian governments who participate in special services as we had the trumpets and feasts, and in the month of the authorities, who also receive a great blessing from the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Ronildo, one more question. What results do you consider to be noteworthy and that you have seen, have experienced there in North America? Especially from the point of view of answers to prayers for the work abroad. We are here in Brazil always praying for the work abroad. Every year, we have a month that we do this. What experiences have you had there that are the result of these prayers? Look, Pastor Josiah, something that has been notable in North America is the salvation of Americans and lives of other nationalities. who come, adapt, and continue in what concerns the stewardship of this work. With the same effort with which it was cared for on the stage, the times of the early church which we read about in the book of Acts. Regardless of cultural differences, the work of the Holy Spirit and doctrinal unity makes us one body. One flock and one spirit in Christ Jesus. Prayer is a blessing. So, because of that, I have another question. What are the reasons we should pray? When we are talking about North America, when we are praying for North America, what are those reasons that should be intensified in our prayers? Well, Pastor Josiah's we believe that the main focus of intercessions for the work in North America is the fact that the official religion here is Christianity. 
but currently it is something very superficial. Without any commitment to eternity. Besides this being a nation where, due to the conditions of security and material stability, many are not attentive to the prophetic moment and the nearness of the return of their Jesus. But the faithful church, which is established here, has exercised its role of making a difference and not letting the light of the temple go out. And it has propagated that Jesus came, died, but resurrected and left his spirit to prepare the bride to go to meet him. Glory to Jesus. Let us be in this posture of always praying for the brothers there in North America. Another question I would like to ask, which is a question we have asked when speaking to other areas. Other regions of the planet. We have a concern, something that is our experience, which is called the unity of doctrine. What is this experience like? What comment would you make about the unity of doctrine, about the communion among the Despite, members? Despite, of course, the diversity of languages, nations, and cultures? We have been extremely zealous together with our pastors regarding sound doctrine, closely monitoring all activities related to the presbytery in order to keep our flocks spiritually healthy. We are experiencing unity among our pastors. We are truly a family inside and outside the church. We are living a wonderful moment of communion. The pastors are integrated into the doctrine in following the guidelines. And the meetings have been opportunities for us to seek together solutions in the body. Something very special that we have here. Now, Ronildo, for us to finish this conversation, this pleasant chat, could you share with us your personal experience? With the work in North America? Pastor Josias, at the beginning of our history here in the United States, everything seemed so difficult, so distant, and we did not see with carnal eyes any possibility of reaching the point we have reached today. I remember that in the 90s, I, my family, my wife, and my two children, with less than four years of age, and other siblings too, we used to travel three for hours on weekends to attend services in Nurk in Novri Jessia. But today we have strong and established churches, healthy and growing for the glory of our God. A clear testimony of this growth is the fact that we have, on average, two baptisms per month in North America. And this was only possible with the eyes of faith and the daily exercise of it. With much work, this faith, which came from eternity, has sustained us so far and will guide us back to our true and original home. Glory to Jesus. If we end up like this, another edition of this content of the work abroad. A content, a sequence, a series that we are doing. We are learning more details, information, and even curiosities about the work abroad. Being brought by our companions, pastors, who are responsible for these various areas. God willing, we will return with another edition of this series, Seth. God bless the peace of the Lord.